Hello everyone and welcome to Decentrally. In this video I'm going to talk about Kyber Network, an upcoming ICO on Ethereum. The project looks promising and if they manage to deliver everything that is planned, then it will be used by almost everyone who actively invests, trades or pays for services in Ethereum tokens and other cryptocurrencies. Kyber Network generated lots of hype, mainly because the idea itself and team behind it is very impressive and they have Vitalik Buterin as an advisor. When they announced that to get a place on the whitelist for ICO, people could just join the Slack, Telegram or some other similar services, tons of users rushed to put themselves on the whitelist. As a result, more than 20,000 users joined the Slack alone and broke a record on Slack. This shows just how many are interested in the project. It's good news for speculators to make short-term profits. All the whitelisted users will be able to participate in crowd sale, which is going to run only for 24 hours. I'm sure that all tokens will be bought very quickly, as there seems to be real high demand. Let's talk about the project itself. So basically, Kyber Network is a decentralized exchange that will operate through smart contracts. Users can send coins from their personal wallets and instantly receive desired coins. Transactions will need only one confirmation from the user, and will be done entirely on smart contracts, so Kyber Network is not going to hold your coins at any point. Now, what is Kyber Network trying to improve? Well, centralized exchanges are often a really bad experience, as they are not very secure, frequently fail in customer support, have unpleasant fees and so on. Instant exchanges like Shapeshift also have those problems. Unfortunately, we don't have proper decentralized alternatives yet. Current decentralized exchanges suffer from many problems. They have confusing user interfaces, are pretty slow, often expensive and have low liquidity. On existing ones, for example Ether Delta, the matching process between buyer and seller is manual, so it can't be as fast as automated orders on centralized exchanges like Bittrex. Low liquidity is also very annoying, as there are often not enough coins available for trade. Another problem is that they keep an order book of users on the blockchain, which means connecting buyers and sellers directly on the chain. While this approach has its advantages, it can be expensive to adjust or cancel orders, as you still have to pay for transaction fees. There are projects that aim to solve these issues, and most famous one is ZeroX, a protocol for exchanging Ethereum-based tokens. ZeroX matches buyers and sellers offline and then executes the deal on the chain. Still, it serves as a base layer for decentralized exchanges, so it can't solve the problem of not having enough funds. Also, the service won't be instant as the whole process takes time. Kyber Network claims that it can fix all those issues. Here is how. Smart contracts should allow instant exchange of tokens and coins, while reserves provide enough funds for operation of the protocol. Reserves is one of the main parts in this system. So how it's going to work? Well, when a user sends token A, it goes through a Kyber Network smart contract and reaches the reserve, which provides token B in exchange for the token A. There will be 5 participants on the network. First, it's users who send and receive tokens. They can be individuals, merchants or smart contract accounts. Second, it's reserve entities that provide funds for the platform. At first, the Kyber Network team is going to run a reserve with 50% of Ethereum collected on the ICO. Soon, third-party reserves will be added that can be both private and public. Public reserves can take contributions from anyone who wants to participate. Reserve providers will earn money from spread on transactions. Third, it's reserve contributors who provide capital and get a part of the platform profit. Fourth, is reserve manager who maintains the reserve, decides what the exchange rates will be and submits those rates to own Kyber Network. And the last one is Kyber Network operator who adds or removes reserve entities and token peers. At first stage, Kyber Network team will do the work of operators, but later a decentralized governance system will be created that is going to manage those tasks. The network will hopefully have enough different reserve entities to avoid monopoly and high fees. When a trade request arrives, Kyber Network will choose the best rates from available reserves, and of course users will know the exact rates before making the transaction. Now let's have a look at the roadmap. They recently launched an MVP on testnet in August and are planning to first main and launch in first quarter of 2018. We will be able to exchange USC20 tokens for Ether. In the next quarter, Kyber Network will add trading between tokens. And in quarter 3, the network will have advanced financial instruments such as forwards and options. 
Hopefully in 2019 they will also add the cross-change exchange feature, which allows instant exchange of different cryptocurrencies. So their goal is to provide an instant and secure exchange with integrated payment APIs and complex financial tools. Kyber Network plans to collaborate with different organizations, including hardware and software wallets, blockchain explorers and so on. Like Changely is integrated in some wallets, you will hopefully have Kyber Network everywhere, so there is no need to go to exchange, you can just instantly trade tokens from your wallet, securely and with low fees. Sounds absolutely awesome if the team manages to deliver what they are promising. Now about the use case of tokens or Kyber Network crystals. Reserves will need KYC to pay for participation on the network. A small part of those fees will go to third parties such as software wallets for attracting users. The rest of tokens will be regularly destroyed. This will slowly reduce the supply, which logically leads to a price increase. Well, now it's time to list disadvantages of the platform and what could possibly go wrong. First of all, it's reliance on reserves. It's the key part of the network and to work flawlessly there must be multiple reserves with as many different coins as possible. The system will be pretty centralized as operators and managers decide lots of things, and if they incidentally or intentionally make wrong decisions, it can harm the whole network. The team claims that it will provide effective tools for decentralized governance, so the community can choose most suitable people, but nobody really knows whether it will work as expected. Another threat to successful implementation of the network can be technical issues. Smart contracts have to be perfect, which is a pretty hard thing to do. The team doesn't seem to be very experienced as well. And of course, there are lots of competitors on the market, but at least on the paper, Kyber Network looks like the best project, or at least one of the best. To summarize, I think Kyber Network is one of the most interesting and needed products in current cryptocurrency space. And if everything goes as planned, it's eventually going to be used by lots of people. They aim to raise $60 million on the ICO. That's a lot of money, but a good project with Vitalik as active advisor is a guarantee of massive hype. So the capitalization can easily go much higher even in short time, after the token is added on exchange. Thanks for watching, subscribe and till the next video.